Hello everyone and welcome back to the video. I've been getting asked a lot recently whether you should make a mangonel or a scorpion to defend your base against range units or whether to attack with mangonel or scorpions and I decided that it's time to make a video. So in this video we're going to be talking about the difference between the mangonel and the scorpion and when you should go for one as opposed to the other. They're both great units but it's important to understand the details to know when to make either or. Let's hop into it and check it out. Alright guys, so the Magnal and the Scorpion are both ranged siege weapons with 7 range in the Castleage and that's really the focus of the video in Castleage right now. And it seems like they do the same thing. It seems like they're great against mass units and they shred range units when they get too close to them. And they're also very resilient to arrow fires. But what's the difference between them? When should you go for one or the other? So to first understand that, let's go ahead and take a look at the pros and cons of each unit, starting with the Scorpion. So the pros of the Scorpion are the fact that it's cheap. It costs only 75 wood and 75 gold to create a Scorpion, and it does consistent damage, meaning that it's very difficult to dodge the shots in full. If your opponent can dodge your entire Scorpion bullet, it's probably because you have only one of them and it's very predictable. But when you have like two or three Scorpions, it's almost impossible, even for a pro, to dodge every shot while actively trying to kill the Scorpion and fight back with, say, a group of crossbows or skirmishers. That's because the scorpion fires rather quickly and its bolt has a really wide damage area so it, it will hit the corner of the army or some of the units if you position correctly and if you get the nice shot that's when it passes through all of your opponent's units and all of your opponent's army and that's really the dream when it comes to using the scorpion but even if you don't land the big shots with them getting even the side kind of shots or the side kind of damage does add up and does kind of weaken your opponent's army making it a lot more risky for them to take engagements from there on out so scorpion being cheap and having consistent damage that is quite difficult to dodge makes it a very consistent consistent and reliable defensive option in particular. Also, a small little point that you have to know when going for the Scorpion is the fact that it has 7 Pierce Armor, not 6 compared to the Mangonel, and where this becomes useful is only, or especially, I shouldn't say only, but especially versus the Cav Archer in the Castle Age, because the Cavalry Archer, fully upgraded, will have 8 damage, meaning it does 2 damage per shot to the Mangonel, but only 1 damage to the Scorpion. So Scorpions will be better consistently than the Mangonels against Cav Archers in most cases. All right, well, that's all nice and good, but what are the cons of the Scorpion? What are the weaknesses that this unit has? Well, the first main weakness, and this is shared with the Mangonel, is the fact that it has a minimum range. It can't shoot units that are too close to it, but this is very similar to the Mangonel, so it's not really too relevant in the context of this video, but I thought I'd mention it just to kind of keep it fair. And also, it doesn't have high burst damage. A Scorpion shot will never absolutely win you the fight. Even if you have multiple Scorpions, it's very rare that you're gonna land a shot that kills dozens of units at once, because those kind of lineups are just very rare, and your opponent won't position his army to let you get those shots off consistently. So while they might happen here and there, they're really not the point of the Scorpion and not what it's actually designed to accomplish. So you don't have any high burst damage and any potential to swing the fights immediately or with you know that one big play. They also only have 40 HP so they're much weaker against melee units that can come up close like Knights or Light Cav. Also people might not know this but Scorpions do pierce damage. That's why Scorpions deal less damage against skirmishers than against crossbowmen for example. This is very relevant when playing against stuff like skirmishers, stuff like janitors, or even stuff like husk girls because when they get really close the scorpions don't really do that much damage and so in comparison to the mangonel which does melee damage scorpion is going to be less effective against those said units very interesting to know this and probably the biggest weakness for the scorpion in certain cases when up against those units all right, so now we know a little bit about the pros and cons of the Scorpion. Let's talk about the pros and cons of the Mangonel, and then at the end, we'll get a conclusion as to when you should use one or the other. So the pros for the Mangonel, the kind of things that it's good at compared to the Scorpion, well, first thing is the high burst damage. That was one of the bad things about the Scorpion. It can't turn the tide of fights. The Mangonel is the complete opposite. It costs 160 wood and 135 gold to make each Mangonel, so it's quite expensive, but at the same time, it does really high burst damage, and it has the potential to turn fights with just one or two good shots landing, which is a really good idea to understand when going for the Mangonels because you need to have the mindset that you're looking actively for these big shots. A Mangonel is kind of like a hit or miss. It can either be insane or it can be terrible depending on the kind of shots you're taking. So the high burst damage has the potential to turn the tides of battles immediately. Mangonels are also really good at dealing high damage to buildings. So killing buildings gives it a huge offensive edge compared to the Scorpion. Scorpion does very minimal damage versus buildings. And so Mangonels having the ability to kill army and buildings makes them a fantastic unit when going for a forward siege in the Castle Age. Also, one thing that the Mangano has, and this is in my opinion, what determines a good Mangano player 
or a bad Maginot player, and this is the attack ground. It's very important to use the attack ground feature that the Maginot has because it takes a predictable unit like the Maginot and makes it completely unpredictable and makes it very flexible. If I had to use the Maginots without an attack ground versus the top players on the ladder, I probably won't land very many shots. It's extremely easy to dodge Maginots if you're not using attack ground, and they can pretty much dodge every shot taking literally zero damage. Not like a little bit of damage, literally zero because my shot will completely miss even if they have a large group of crossbows. And it's not very difficult to do. A lot of people are really good at microing against Maginots, but if you're a Maginot player or if you like to use them, you're gonna have to get good or you're gonna be good with the attack ground because that's the only real way to find consistent success with them. So attack ground, very important for the Maginots and one thing that gives them a huge advantage over the Scorpion. Another advantage, and this is a minor one, is the fact that they have 50 HP. So they're slightly more resilient against melee units, which is a nice feature, but of course, nothing too insane there. All right, let's take a look at the cons of the mango. I've already mentioned the price. It's more expensive than the scorpion. Again, 160 wood, 135 gold. So it costs almost double the scorpion price pretty much. Uh, it has a long reload time, which is one of the things that kind of fits into the narrative of hit or miss because with the long reload time, you have kind of like one shot per battle usually. So you're gonna have to shoot and if it misses well, then you're very vulnerable and opponent can punish you for taking that shot even. So definitely be mindful of what you shoot and what you go for with the mango because you can't just shoot at everything or like the first thing that you see, you can't just take your shot because then you're completely vulnerable in that one or two second window where the Maginot is reloading and cannot attack. It's also much easier to dodge the Maginot damage. As I mentioned earlier, people are getting extremely good at microing against it. And so if you're not landing those attack rounds, it's going to be very easy for your opponent to just simply micro away from the Maginot. You deal literally zero damage and then you lose a very expensive unit. So Maginot overall has very nice strengths, but very big weaknesses. And it kind of fits that hit or miss once again, category of units it can either be amazing or it can be terrible. And in my opinion, that is the big distinguishing idea idea between the mangonel and the scorpion. All right, so now to give you guys a little bit of a conclusion here and tell you guys when you should go for either a Maginot or a Scorpion. So just to recap, the Scorpion, consistent damage, very reliable, but not gonna be that, that powerful. Maginot, very powerful, but not very reliable and not very consistent. All right, so general rule to follow here, guys. Scorpions in general will be much better on defense in terms of early castle age. Whenever you need to have a little bit of extra defense, you have some archers, you're up against maybe archers and skirmishers, and you just need a little bit of siege weapon to give you that edge. Scorpion will be fantastic. Also, if you're playing with knights and you need some extra siege to defend against crossbows or even some pikes, scorpions will be the best unit to use on defense because it's hard to dodge their damage. They're very cheap to mix in with your army and they're just going to be able to force armies away from them, especially if you get two or three, because it's simply too hard to micro against that kind of composition with knights behind and scorpions in there as well. They're also really good at standalone because just like three or four scorpions by themselves, no knights or no army other than them can easily deal with a big mass of range units because it's simply not worth it for him to try to take that fight against you. You can just shoot with the scorpions, run back a little bit, force them to attack you again or come towards you with the archers and then shoot again with the scorpions landing big, big shots. Now, when talking about offense, I generally recommend to go for the mangonels. And the main reason I say this is simply because the mangonels will be good against units using the attack round feature and also against buildings. So it's kind of like a double threat. It forces your opponent to fight the mangonel because you're gonna be killing their buildings if they don't address it. And if they do try to address it, then you can have them running into you. And that's when the attack round feature, that's when the big mangonel shot can really come. But if you're on defense with the Mangano, he doesn't have to take the fight. He can attack you, see that you have a Mangano, and if he wants to micro against it, he could. But if he decides, you know what, I'm not going to risk it, he can just run away and there's nothing you can do about it with the Mangano. It's even not viable to chase him because if you chase him, take one shot and miss, he's going to easily kill your Mangano. It's not the same as the Scorpion. Scorpion, you can go forward, take a shot, he can dodge one, take another shot, and you're getting some value even on defense when you're chasing him away. So Mangano, much better on offense, Scorpion, much better on defense. And that's going to be the general rule when it comes to which one you should go for. Scorpions, another general rule, are much better versus cavalry archers because you only take one damage from them. So I'd always recommend going scorpions versus cav archers unless you need something to kill buildings, then go for the mangonel. But here's an idea that doesn't get talked about enough. And this is gonna be working for offense and defense and will be probably your best option in most cases. And it's gonna be a wild one, mixing the two units together and creating a small composition of siege. One mangonel and two scorpions is much better on defense and on offense in most cases than two Maginots. And the reason is your opponent can micro against two Maginots if he's good enough to dodge the shots that you're sending. But it's incredibly difficult to dodge two Scorpions and a Maginot shooting. And the reason being that Scorpions and Maginots have different fire rates. So while he's thinking about the Maginot shot, the Scorpion shots are coming. And when the Maginot shot's going, Scorpion's reloading. And so after the Maginot shot is landed, he dodges it, then right away the Scorpions will shoot again. And so now he's got to think about that. So it's incredibly difficult for a human to get a nice pattern to consistently dodge damage from both a Maginot 
and a couple scorpions. And this is why I believe that if you're on offense or on defense, mixing mangonels and scorpions is the best way to go to get a good mix of high burst damage and consistent hard to dodge damage. This will make your army compositions a lot better and a lot harder to play against. The last thing I'll mention is the fact that scorpions can be a really good tool to defend your mangonels from incoming pikemen because usually when you're using siege, you're going to be going for like either, you know, knights or crossbows mixed in with siege. And the main composition is, in my opinion, knights and siege. That's the one you're going to be going for more often than not. And so if your opponent is on like crossbow and pikemen, mangonels are a good choice because if you land big attack rounds, you could easily win fights. But then again, if the pikes get too close to the mangonels, who's going to defend the mangonels? The knights are not going to want to engage necessarily on a big mass of pikes. And so this is when scorpions can come in. So the last thing I'll mention is the fact that scorpions can kind of cover the big weakness of the mangonel, which is going to be like pikemen when you have knights mixed in as well. And so in general, the big takeaway here is when in late cast stage, when committing to a lot of the siege weapons, definitely make a mix of both and don't just tunnel vision on only one or the other. But early game, they both serve different things. And depending on the situation, you can pick one or the other. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Hopefully it was useful. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to support the YouTube channel, of course. And that's going to be it. Take care, stay safe, and bye for now.